Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is John, I'm a full-time eBay reseller based in Melbourne, Australia. We're going to talk about buyer retention and buyer acquisition. Simply put, buyer retention just means keeping a buyer, someone who has bought with you once or more, and then buyer acquisition is someone who doesn't know you exist and the effort you put in to get them. Which one do you think is easier? Retention, of course. And the reason why is because there's familiarity, they understand who you are, there's a reference point, and if you've done a good job, it's a lot easier to retain them than if you've done a bad job. So, ignorance counts as a bad job. And by that I mean, think about your internet company, your energy company that doesn't tell you when they've raised their, raised their rates or if they do some dodgy things on the back end, move you from one plan to another, and they just don't tell you, and then eventually you find out that's bad, right? A good job means you're on top of it, you know what's happening, there is no disconnect between what you think you're getting and what you're actually getting. So, on eBay, I know that eBay tries to retain buyers. And they do that by promoter listings for the most part. They they put your, sorry, not Google Ads. They promote our listings on Google. So when someone looks for something, if it's an item that is listed on eBay, eBay shows them an ad. If they click on it, they come to your store. And essentially eBay reminds buyers that we exist and if you want to come and find something we're the quickest way for you to find it ebay does a great job of that however if ebay doesn't come ebay's ads don't lead the buyer to you but to somebody else and that somebody else doesn't respect it that buyer may be put off the platform altogether think about it there are times when there are sellers on the platform who and let me know if you think that this is correct or not, right? There are, buy there are sellers on the platform who don't care. They're there to perform a transaction, and that's it. They don't care about the experience. They don't care about the feedback. They just want to get money and move on. If eBay bans them, couldn't care less, okay? They don't care sellers. You've got sellers who are transactional, which means they don't care if the buyer ever comes back. As far as they're concerned, money in my pocket, and I'm going to keep selling, keep selling, keep selling. And then... There's the limited platform mindset. And by that, I mean people who, sellers who think that eBay as a platform is, has, has holes. There are, there, are the, there are the types on social media who always complain, oh, eBay doesn't have this. eBay really should give me that. This is not good enough. That's not good enough. Um, and then at the same time, they also complain that the fees are too expensive. For the fee I pay, I really should get XYZ features. This other platform is free and I've got these features. And there's no real... We've, already, we've talked about comparing eBay to other platforms. What you pay for what you get is the best value you can find because of the reach. Reach is so underrated. I digress. And then you got the ones who just don't know how to use eBay. So those who calculate shipping wrong, put in wrong descriptions, put in bad descriptions, um, cancel, um, cancel auctions because they, are price, they didn't get the price they want. Um, people who just are not nice to buyers even. People will try and take the sale of eBay. You've got role players on eBay who will ruin a first-time experience for a buyer on the platform. They exist. eBay will deal with them, but only after the harm's already been done. So then, where does retention come in for you? You have to therefore really work at retaining your buyers so that you're not relying on eBay to bring them back because they already remember you. So I thought we'd talk about several ways that you can retain your buyer. First one, send them coupons. Sending them coupons is as simple as creating a coupon in the seller hub and you can send it to people who have bought from you before or you can just message to buyers who select selectedly from orders manually. Go to your orders page and just send a coupon. You can also attach coupons when you send offers to buyers. So that being someone who is uh, someone who has clicked on a listing for the first time, watched it, didn't check out, clicked on the listing, didn't add to cart, um, added to cart, didn't check out, or just clicked and didn't do anything else. You can say, hey, since you clicked on it and you're interested in it, and do this, by the way, within the hour that you see it, because that's it's a, one of those things where they do it, and eBay makes them eligible for it shortly after. So when you see it, do it as soon as you can, so that the buyer goes, oh yeah, I really wanted the item. 
I guess 20% off would be quite nice. But I don't really want to check out right now. Oh, there's a coupon code that has no expiry. Okay, thank you seller for letting me know that when I come back later, I can use this code. Alright, so now you've gotten them. And then if they click on another listing in the future, send it, send it again. Huh. So this is the experience here. Okay, I'm going to just come here, then I'm not going to bother searching generally anymore. Assuming that the store has enough stuff that a buyer would like. Which then brings me into the next thing. Create an experience. And by that I mean, make sure that your store has items that are related to each other so that potential buyers will come enjoy being there. With the, You know that my view on generalist stores is that eventually you should scale up into a niche store. Just because... Buyers don't like being in places that have things all mixed up. Thrift stores, flea markets, that's where you'll find random things on a table all together in close proximity. They never get top dollar. It's always a bargain fest and as such, you can either follow that model or you can follow a model like Country Road that, as I mentioned before, will not put a female blazer next to a male blazer. They'll make you walk around change rooms just to get from one gender to the other. And so, that tells you that people like to be immersed in a store. I know eBay is a search engine. I know buyers will find items the very first time when they search. But it's a lot easier to just go to a safe seller and browse, especially if you're the type that replenishes your listings 10, 20 a day. If a buyer is on their phone scrolling at night, even with five minutes, they can digest all your new listings. And if every day you're putting up new listings that a buyer is interested in, guess what? That's retention right there. They've bypassed search. You're no longer competing on price with anybody else. If your pricing is within a range that they're willing to pay, they're not going to bother even considering getting it elsewhere because it's just easier to go to you. They know how you do things. They are happy with your service. They, they notice that you are building a business that suits them. Even if you don't know them, you've never met them, but in your mind, there's a buyer that you kind of have an idea of what they're like. You know what they like. Interest-wise, you know what they are willing to pay. You've created what we call an avatar. And you're creating experience for them. That's retention. The other thing is your the way that you respond. There's a vibe when you... Vibe sounds very dating-like, but you get the idea. Some people you talk to, you get the feeling like you're a pain in the ass and you really shouldn't have asked a question to begin with. Some people you talk to, they give you this impression like they have all the time in the world to talk to you. And some people you talk to... You feel like they get it. The less you, the less you say, the more they know, and then they just solve your problem for you. It's like that's great experience, you know. So, what kind of vibe do you give to your buyers? And are you actually open to feedback by allowing other people to actually review your messages, other resellers, of course, or just business people in general, and see, hey, what's the impression I give off when I'm replying to messages? And if they say, look, you sound kind of impatient, don't go. No, I don't. Just go, oh, how would you reword what I've just written so that I come across more patient, but I still want to be direct to the point. And as you, as you tweak the vibe that you give out to your buyers, that also adds to the experience and the retention. Because here's the thing. If I buy stuff from a, from a business, I want to know the, what the experience will be like if I need to return something, if I need to change something, if I need to ask a question. If I feel like I already know you and I know what to expect with you, I'm not going to go elsewhere. I'm not going to take the risk of going elsewhere, especially for an item that I'm interested in, but it's the delivery that's in question, not the item. Lots of sellers don't appreciate this part enough. They think that when they find an item and put it on eBay, that that's a done deal. The item sells itself. No. If the item is in competition with other items and a buyer is familiar with how an item will be fulfilled through a different seller, the fulfillment part is a big component about with peace of mind. If I know how an item will be delivered to me and I'm confident that it's consistent every single time and it's satisfactory. It doesn't have to be perfect. Satisfactory and I'm happy. I'm not taking the risk of it being fulfilled by somebody else. I need to save a lot of money to choose a different seller. And if this seller not only fulfills consistently, replenishes their store, takes photos in a way that I enjoy looking at visually because I'm a social media anyways, and when I'm asked questions, they respond in a way that makes me feel like I've known them for years. No chance I consider anybody else. Just too much effort. You're my guy. That's retention. And the last thing is, 
acknowledging your buyers every chance they give you. <sighs> acknowledging your buyers. Sure, you could thank every buyer after they buy an item from you. Thank you for shopping with us. It could be an automated message. Don't do it, but it could be. A better way of acknowledging your buyers is when they ask you any questions, when they come to you with problems, when they come to you with just feedback because they're trying to be helpful. Take it on board and give them the benefit of the doubt. Too many sellers that I see on social media bag out buyers for giving them feedback. They will say things like, yeah, like I'm going to do that. Why should? Why is that the attitude? Perhaps ask if that's a valid thing. Perhaps ask if it's something that you can do but just don't want to do. But never ever do that. Yeah, nah. You know, to, to buyers, buyers don't... They don't have to shop with you. I, I cannot stress that enough. They do not have to go with you. You know, you're not the... Even... Even the COVID vaccine had different manufacturers. It wasn't just the one place. So how much less important are you, seller of a pair of sneakers? Or of a rare figurine? Like, you're not that special. So give your buyers the acknowledgement that they deserve for choosing you, reaching out to you, because that's not easy for a lot of people either. And what you'll find is, business will grow because the repeat buying happens the retention will make your job a lot easier and then eventually you'll notice that when new sellers want to get into your category or they want to get into just reselling in general first thing they'll be amazed at how big your business is for just one person running it and secondly they'll go that looks like a lot of work i don't want to do it yeah for someone who is looking at it from an acquisition point of view versus a retention point of view Retention, for the most part, is a second nature thing. You fix the, once you make it a habit of incentivizing your buyers through coupons, through offers, and then refining the vibe that you give out to them through your messaging, and your attitude towards them is one that you're grateful for them, I, you are acknowledging them, giving them the benefit of the doubt. All that stuff, once it comes second nature, you'll find that it's just the way your business runs. When your staff, when you when you get staff and you teach them, you then multiply that culture. That's when you get culture for your business. That's how you differentiate your business, not just you, from the other businesses that are, you know, penny counting, they are suspicious of buyers, they their vibe is one of I don't want to lose as opposed to helping you win. And, and businesses that don't care about incentivizing buyers because they just think that their products will sell themselves. Think about which business you would buy from and be that business. So yeah, cost retention versus cost of buyer acquisition. Until next video, happy reselling. Think about how you can keep your buyers within your ecosystem. Don't just rely on eBay to do that promoting for you and you'll go far. Until next time, take care. Bye.